Hey guys. Okay. So I'm only going to be able to read one chapter today because I have a meeting in about 30 minutes with um, Mrs. Owens and Mr. Armstrong, the superintendent of the schools. Um, we're going to be discussing about, well, all the teachers too, but we're going to be discussing what everything is going to look like when we come back for virtual school. So um, hopefully after that meeting, I'll have a few more answers for everybody and we can figure everything out. Um, I know that this is not how any of us plan to, to spend the last of our third grade year. And I have cried many tears over it, but I'm not going to right now. I'm going to stay strong. So um, I'm going to read one chapter and then hopefully I can come back later today with some updates or tell you them tomorrow. Anyway, so when we were... Oh, and I am working on ways that we can video chat with one another. I've had some parents send me some um, different places that we can use. Um, so I'm going to check them all out. And... Um, I'm going to, parents, I'm going to be posting a poll and I want you guys to choose what time would work best for you guys um, for me to do like a video chat with the kiddos. I know that a lot of you are still having to work and I want to be able to include as many kids as I can. Okay, so back to the book. So yesterday we started Shiloh and in the first two chapters, we saw that Shiloh was very leery. He did not want to come straight to Marty. He was, it seemed like he was very scared and Marty picked up on that. Um, Shiloh, when he would, when Marty would walk, Shiloh would walk. When Marty would stop, Shiloh would stop. And he would stay pretty far back from him. He wouldn't ever get very close. Even when Marty would get down and say, come here, boy, come here. Um, Shiloh still wouldn't come. But when Marty whistled, whatever clicked with Shiloh and he came to him and he followed him home. And his parents said, you cannot keep the dog. It belongs to was his name Trap or Judd? Judd. His name was Judd. So he said, they said, you know, this dog belongs to Judd. You had to give him back. And Marty did not want to. He knew that Shiloh was being mistreated. He knew that Judd was being very mean to him. And even when they went to drop him off, Judd kicked him. So he, he knew this is not the right place for him. And he said he would keep his eye out for him. So... Now we're to chapter three. So let's see what happens. Okay. I didn't sleep more than a couple hours that night. When I do, I dream of Shiloh. When I don't, I'm thinking about him out in the rain all afternoon, head on his paws, watching our door. Thinking how I disappointed him, whistling like I meant something that first time, getting him to come to me, then taking him on back to Judd Travers to be kicked all over again. By five o'clock, when it's growing light, I know pretty much what I have to do. I have to buy that dog from Judd Travers. I don't let my mind go any further. I don't dwell on what Judd would want for Shiloh or even whether he'd sell, especially don't ask myself how I'm supposed to get the money. All I know is that I can think of only one way to get that dog away from Judd, and that's what I'm gonna have to do. My bed is the couch in the living room. So when dad comes in to fix his breakfast, I pull on my jeans and go to sit across from him in the kitchen. First, he makes himself a lunch to carry to work. He drives his Jeep to the post office in Sistersville, where he cases mail for around 200 families and delivers it. Then he comes back to the friendly post office where he cases mail for 200 more, and he delivers that too. A route takes him about 85 miles on roads you can hardly get to on the, in the winter. Morning, he says to me as he stuffs the sandwich in his sack and then starts in on his breakfast, which is wheat chicks and any fruit he can get from our peach tree. He makes himself coffee and eats the cornbread or biscuits Ma saves for, me, for him from our meal the night before. Can you think of a way I could earn myself some money? I ask him with this froggy kind of voice that shows you aren't really woke up yet. Dad takes another bite of cornbread, looks at me for a moment, and then he goes on studying his cereal. Says exactly what I figured he'd say. Collect some bottles and take them in for a deposit. Pick some of aluminum cans, maybe, for the recycling place. I mean, real money. I gotta have it faster than that. Well, how fast? I try to think, which I could only earn, which I could earn in a week, but I know I can't. I have to go out every day for a whole summer collecting cans and bottles to have much of anything at all. A month, maybe, I tell him. Well, I'll ask along my mail route, but don't know many folks with money to spare, he says, which is what I thought. 
After Dad's gone off, Becky gets up before Ma, and I fix her a bowl of Cheerios, put her sneakers on so she won't stub her toes, and brush the snarls out of her hair. Read once in a book about how some kids earn some money babysitting. Boy, if I ever got paid even a nickel every time I'd taken care of Becky, Daryl Lynn too, I'd have a lot of dollars. I do a whole bunch of jobs that other kids, other places, get paid to do, but it wouldn't ever occur to me to ask for pay. If I did, Dad, he'd say, you live in this house, boy? And when I'd say, well, yeah, he'd say, then you do your share just like the rest of us, which is why I never ask. More Cheerios, says Becky, and all the while I'm making her breakfast, I'm thinking the best route to take to find aluminum cans. By the time Daryl Lynn gets up wearing one of Dad's old t-shirts for her nightgown, I'd figured how I could double my can count. But when Ma gets up a few minutes later, she takes one look at me and guesses I'm thinking. You got that dog on your mind, she says, lifting the big iron skillet to the stove top and laying some bacon in it. Well, thinking doesn't cost nothing, I tell her. She gives me a little smile, then sets about making my bacon crisp the way I like it. We don't say any more about Judd's dog. Must walk five miles that morning and all I found was seven cans and one bottle. When dad comes home about four, he hasn't found anybody looking for help either. But he says, the Sears fall catalog came this afternoon, Marty. You got nothing to better to do tomorrow. You could ride my route and help me deliver them. I say yes to that. No, I won't get nothing more out of it than a soft drink at the gas station, but I like going around in the Jeep, riding over back roads like the ripping truck and cowhouse run road with dad. I can take a bag with me just in case and pick up any cans or bottles I happen to see. That night, Dad and I sit out on the porch, Ma's in the swing behind us, shelling lima beans for the next day, and Becky and Daryl Lynn's in the grass, catching lightning bugs and putting them in a jar. Dad laughs at the way Becky squeals when he, he, she gets a bug in her hand. But seeing those bugs in the jar reminds me of Shiloh, all chained up at Judd's house, a prisoner, as sure as those bugs. Truth is, about everything reminds me of Shiloh. You once get a dog to look at you the way Shiloh looked at me, you don't forget it. Got 17, Daryl Lynn shouts. Aren't they pretty, Ma? Almost could turn off the electricity and light them in the kitchen, Ma says. You gonna let them go, I ask. Daryl Lynn shrugs. They'll die if you keep them in a jar, I tell her. Becky, she comes over and calls onto my lap. We'll let them go, Marty, she says, and kisses me on the neck. A butterfly kiss, she calls it, and bats her eyelashes against my skin. Feels like a moth's wings. She laughs and I laugh. Then far off, I hear a dog. Leastwise, I think it's a dog. Might be a fox cub, but I think Shiloh. You hear that? I ask Dad. Oh, just a hound complaining, is all he says. Next morning, Dad gives me a nudge when he comes through in the kitchen. I'm up like a shot. We ride to Sistersville, and I haul all those catalogs out to the Jeep while Dad cases mail. Not everybody gets a catalog, of course, but anyone who places an order with Sears during the year gets one, so there's a lot to load up. By a quarter of nine, we're on the route. Dad pulls the Jeep up close to the mailboxes and I stuff the mail in, turn up the little red flag on the side if there is one. Some folks even wait down at the box and then you feel real bad if you don't have anything for them. Dad knows everybody's name though and he always takes some time to say a little something. Morning, Bill, he says to an old man whose face lights up like Christmas when we stop. How's the wife doing? Oh, about the same, the man says, but this catalog sure is gonna cheer her up and he sets off for his house, mail tucked under his arm. People even leave something in their boxes every once in a while for Dad. Mrs. Ellison always leaves a little loaf of banana bread or a cinnamon roll, and Dad saves it to eat with his lunch. After we finish Sistersville, we do the friendly route, but as the Jeep gets up near Shiloh, my heart starts to pound. I'm thinking of closing my eyes tight in case the dog's around. If I see his eyes looking at me, it'll just drive me crazy. I can hear dogs barking when we're about a half mile off from Judge, Judge Travers' trailer. Dogs can pick up the sound of a Jeep that quick. I get Judd's mail ready for him. He hasn't got any catalog coming, but he's got two other magazines that'll probably warm his heart. Guns and ammo and shooting times. Why don't he take a magazine about dogs? I'm thinking, teach him how to be kind. All the dogs is chained up when we get to his place, so none's waiting for us at the box, but Judd is. He's got a big old sickle is cutting weeds along the side of the road. Morning, Dad says as the Jeep pulls up. 
Judd straightens his back. His shirt's all soaked with sweat, and he wears the brown handkerchief tied around his forehead to keep the sweat from running in his eyes. Well, how you doing, Ray? He says, and comes over to the Jeep with his hand out. I give him his mail, and even he stinks like sweat. I know everybody sweats, and everybody sweat stinks, but seems to me Judge Sweat stinks worse than anyone's. It's mean sweat. How come you aren't at work? Dad says. You think this ain't work? Judge answers, then he laughs. Got me a week of vacation coming, so I take a day now and then. This Friday I'm going hunting again. Take the dogs up on the ridge and see if I can get me a rabbit. Possum, maybe. Haven't had me a possum dinner for some time. Dog's okay, Dad asks, and I know he's leaning for me. Lean and mean, says Judge. Keep them half starved, they'll hunt better. Well, gotta keep them healthy, though, or you won't have them for long, Dad says. I know he's saying that for me, too. Lose one, I'll buy another, Judge tells him. I can't help myself. I lean out the window where I can see his face real good. Big, round face, whiskers on his cheek, and a chin where he hasn't shaved his face for five days. Tight little bushy eyes looking down on me beneath his bushy brows. That dog that followed me home the other day, I say. He okay? He's learning, Judd says. Didn't give him an ounce of supper that night. Just put him where he could watch the others eat. Teach him not to wander off. Got him back in the shed right now. My stomach hurts for Shiloh. That dog, I say again. What's his name? Judd just laughs and his teeth dark where the tobacco juice oozes through. Hasn't got a name. Never name any of my dogs. Dog, one, two, three, four. That's all. When I want him, I whistle. When I don't, I give him a kick. Get scram. Out. That's my dog's names. And he laughs. Makes the fat on his belly shake. I'm so mad I can't see. I know I should shut my mouth, but I keep on talking. His name's Shiloh, I say. Judd looks down at me, spits sideways, studies me a good long time, and then shrugs as the jeep moves forward again on along the river. Okay, so there's chapter three. It's getting good, isn't it? Okay, so I have that meeting here in just a few minutes, and then hopefully I can give you guys some more. Thank you, Pete. Please move. I can give you guys some more answers. So until then, um, wash your hands really good, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.